I read the book. I read it cover to cover. In fact, I finished it this morning. This is the one I'm talking about, Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House. Um, I didn't actually read it on this one. I'm showing you this one because it's easier to see on the camera. I read it on this one. I have two um, of these tablets, ebook readers. These are both Barnes & Noble Nooks. I like this one better because it's smaller, it's lighter, and the battery lasts a lot longer. Um, this is one of those e-ink ones, black and white but it's a lot more comfortable to work with. But I like the other one too. So what did I think of Michael Wolff's book? Um, few things worth mentioning. <laughs> I read a review. I read a few reviews. Um, well, now go back, going back even further, <laughs> I was itching to get the book, which was technically originally not supposed to be released until tomorrow morning or actually tonight at midnight tonight being tuesday the original uh release date was for tuesday what's today today's the 8th tuesday uh january 9th but the someone a lawyer um trump's lawyer or bannon's lawyer i don't know who it was but a lawyer um sent a cease and desist order to the publisher little brown i think it was little brown was the publisher trying to block the release of the book and there was such a demand for it that little brown moved up the uh release date and it was released friday friday morning uh, there were some reports on the news that people were lined up outside the bookstores at midnight in washington dc to get their hands on it and many bookstores sold out of the book within minutes they were they were they put signs on the door saying there are no more copies of fire and fury at this store i did look at amazon within a short while amazon must have sold out because they put their delivery date at two to four weeks i got my copy uh digitally because you can go on to amazon or um, Barnes and Noble. This is a Barnes and Noble Nook. So if you get a Nook, I think the best place to get it is Barnes and Noble. You can instantly download a copy, and I think it's fifteen dollars for the the digital copy at the moment. So I didn't have to go around looking at bookstores and trying to see if I could find a copy somewhere. I just downloaded a copy of it. Okay. So what do I think of the book? Well, I thought it was very readable. I like his writing style um, because to me it's it's very accessible or I can't think of a word accessible is the word that comes to mind but it's like I'm not constantly having to refer back to a list of characters like Bob Woodward when he writes a book he often puts at the beginning of the book all the characters that he's going to be talking about the people what their jobs are in Washington and he can put so many names in and around this the text that you end up losing track of who's whom with uh wolf there's names in there but it's he doesn't bog the text down he doesn't bog the narration down with a lot of names and a lot of numbers um so i think the information is therefore very accessible it's very easy to read the book the text flows nicely you don't get bogged down with a lot of circuitous uh, text uh, ideas couched within ideas um, although he does that somewhat you do have to have a dictionary at hand because <laughs> I was looking up some of the words like what does that word mean what does that word mean he's very erudite he's he's got a good vocabulary anyways um, I did read some reviews about it some of the early reviews one of which amused me I didn't read all of it I just read the beginning of that review and this reviewer said that he hasn't read the book and will not read the book, never will read the book, because he knows the book is filled with lies and inaccuracies. Well, how can you know unless you read the book? I know people are going to be biased for or against the book. If you're a Democrat and you despise Donald Trump, you're, gonna, you're going to enjoy the book. If you're a, a, a very supportive very um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Someone who's very supportive of Donald Trump. You voted for him and you'll, you would vote for him again when he comes up for re-election in 2020, if he does. Um, you're not going to like the book. If you're a, a conservative and a Republican and you don't want anything bad said about the Republican Party, neither party is great. The, both parties have their faults. So I don't consider myself to be a real staunch liberal, but I would say I'm more liberal than I am conservative. I know Hillary Clinton wouldn't have made a great, a great president. I know Obama didn't, wasn't a great president. Uh, no president in my memory since maybe Kennedy, and Kennedy got away with a lot. Um, the, the press wasn't, media wasn't following the president around the way they do today. Every little uh, indiscretion is, is instantly published in the media today. I mean, Kennedy was committing adultery in the White House. Anyways, and that and if you're from Massachusetts, I apologize for having say that say that my grandmother, who was um, my mother's mother, very very um, devout Catholic um, and very devout <laughs> Kennedyite, she had her picture of 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 John F. Kennedy right alongside her picture of Jesus on her little altar with her candles in her home, and she would pray to them both. <laughs> And she was from Webster, Massachusetts. So that's where I was born. Nobody's perfect. And I'm as biased as anyone else, I suppose. I like to say about others, and I can include this to myself, about myself. Anyone can have an opinion. But my having opinion, an opinion doesn't make me an authority. It just makes me opinionated. So um, rail against me or, or uh, support me. I don't care because <laughs> we're all entitled. It's a, it's a free country. We all have First Amendment rights. Um, other things about the book. There were some interesting things I learned about the book. Uh, Pence himself said that he's good for little more than funerals and ribbon cuttings. And the author, Wolf, said that Pence is not the brightest bulb in the chandelier. <laughs> So I don't know how I would feel about him becoming the president if Donald Trump was removed for any reason. Removal is possible. In fact, Bannon, toward the end of the book, Bannon said that there were three ways the president would go. And he, he gave them all equal probability. One, he'll be impeached. Two, he'll be removed from office from uh, using Article Number 25, Article 25 of the Constitution, declaring him unfit to be president. Highly unlikely that would happen. Or three, he said he would limp through the remainder of his first term and not be elected to a, a second term. I want to add a fourth one to that. I believe there's a fourth way. And I mentioned this before in one of my earlier vlogs that it all depends upon what Mueller releases when he finally finishes when his team finishes their investigation, it all depends on what's released. Um, that m Trump could re could resign, like like Nixon did, and there were uh, in. I learned more in the book about what they're looking for, and uh, Mueller's team doesn't leak anything. Whereas this was fun, this was fun. I've seen political cartoons where um, Trump was complaining about White House leaks. And the, the White House was like a geyser of water pouring out all the windows in the chimney and they're leaking like crazy. Well, there were factions, warring factions inside the West Wing of the White House. There was the group that Wolf refers to as Jarvanka, Jared and Ivanka. Jarvanka, he, re he uses them both, mentions them both as like one entity, Jarvanka. And their cronies, their team, were fighting against Bannon and his team, the Bannonites, and they were purposely leaking things about each other, right and left, in their combat against each other. So you, you, you hear about these complaints about leaks, but the West Wing was leaking everything they could get their hands on because they were at war with one another. So what did surprise me uh, about Wolf is that he said he was a semi-permanent fixture in the West Wing. He had a, a, a place on the sofa and he was there a lot. 
And evidently, the White House staff, the people there in the West Wing, assumed he was documenting the, the first months of the, the Trump administration and going to be saying what wonderful things Trump was doing, blah, 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 blah. But he was writing everything down. They didn't expect him to do a, an expose like this, uh, where revealing all sorts of things, which made me think that here again is one of the problems when you have a, a, an administration and its staff that has so little experience in Washington. They're not, they're not Washington savvy, political savvy. Had Hillary Clinton become the president, you know she and her team would not have allowed n nearly unfettered access of a, a journalist in the West Wing every day doc documenting everything that was going on. Ple people who were Washington savvy, they just, <laughs> they just wouldn't do that. So he was kind of blessed in that he was taking advantage of a situation where the people there just didn't know that really he didn't belong there. I was mentioning that there was a fourth way that Trump would go, and that is a resigning, because the th things that I see that could come out of the, um, the um, Mueller investigation, based upon the people who were arrested, indicted, and the charges that have been leveled so far toward them, like Manafort and so forth, that what he could find, the three things I'm thinking he could find, the most obvious things, and I'm sure you've, you've come to the same conclusion yourself, rather than collusion with the Russians, actual conspiracy on the part of the Trump campaign, maybe not Trump himself, but his sons, uh, his son-in-law, people who were working for him, conspiracy with the, the Russians to undermine the election in 2016 in order to give it to Trump. Conspiracy, that's bad. Or two, and or um, two, oh, obstruction of justice uh, because of the reasons for firing Comey and so, so forth. That's what brought Nixon down, um, obstruction of justice. And the third thing, and this is the scariest one, but again, because of the people who, why was Manafort arrested? Why was, why was his home raided and evidence taken from his home? Manafort was very involved financially with the Russians, the um, oligarchs with Putin himself, lots of involvement of money there. Trump is a real estate tycoon and the Russians like to use American real estate for money laundering and Trump if not him, at least his family, his son, uh, his son-in-law, sons, could be indicted for conspiring with the Russians to commit money laundering for profit. Any of those things, those three things, money laundering, conspiracy, um, ob obstruction of justice, any of those three could cause Trump to resign. So that's the fourth thing, the fourth thing that I see that Trump could resign. When? I don't know. I have a feeling that we're going to know something. We're going to know enough by summer or maybe early fall as far as what's going on. The, the, the Mueller team seems to be pr progressing along. They're getting their information. Uh, the hammer could drop at any time. So, um, but those are the things that I see as far as what could be the end of Trump. I don't know that I, I I hope for it, because again, Pence does not seem to be a a, a good a good replacement for Trump. But ah, what are you going to do? You go with the best you've got. Um, other things that I appreciated in the book that I thought was amusing: the Republicans hated what Obama was doing um, with a lot of executive orders, passing laws, uh, the, bypassing the Congress because the Congress was was overruling everything he did. Uh, during the remaining six years of his time in office, uh, the, the Republicans were in control of Congress, and, and they just fought him in every every way possible. Um, I understood why, reading this book, why McConnell, every time he was in a picture with Trump, he was grinning like a little schoolgirl in love. And the book mentioned that Trump would sign pretty near anything that was put in front of him. So basically, the Republicans were doing what they complained that Obama was doing. 
that a lot of uh, laws were established by executive order, rule by decree. Um, I think he used the word that Trump, we were turning Trump into an emperor or a king. So um, there's a lot in the book, a lot of dysfunction in the White House, um, not a lot of scandal, but more of an explanation of how the White House was, I was going to say how the White House was being run, how the White House was not being run, um, explaining a lot of what was going on and why things were so crazy. Um, I, I just thought it was, a, it was a good book. Again, not everyone is going to agree, and I know that, and I don't care. <laughs> anyone is entitled to their opinion. But if anyone does say anything to me about it, and they have. I had lunch with two people today. Uh, if they say anything about the book, my first answer is, have you read it? And of course, they haven't. I said, well, you, you can't really condemn the book or say much about it if all you've done is hear what others have said about it. Because a lot of those, whether it's coming from Fox News or The Nation or The Hill, uh, New York Times, Washington Post, a lot of those articles are going to be biased. And I've read a few of them myself, and I, I expect to see the bias. Um, it is a tell-all expose on the Trump White House. It's not a flattering expose. <laughs> it's quite a, a damning expose of what's going on. So, um, But until you actually read it, you can't really say much about it. It's like my father used to do that. Well, I don't know what's going on, but I just know it's wrong. And I just know it. Because he didn't like what he was hearing, you know. It's like when I hear when people try to tell me their conspiracy theories, one of the, my defenses is, well, what books have you read lately? And that usually just shuts them down. I read a lot of these books. I like to read books because you get more of an in-depth story. I didn't know what was going on in the White House, but having read this book, I know a lot more now than I did before, and I've changed my thinking. Uh, because of how much I've learned, and I'm looking forward to other books. There's another book I just started reading. I think it's called um, Something with the Devil. Hold on a second. It's on here. There it is. I just started reading this book, Devil's Bargain. I don't know how well you can see that, by Joshua Green. Stephen Bannon, Donald Trump, and the Storming of the Presidency. This is an older book, um, but I want to read that to get more information about... Um, Stephen Bannon and Donald Trump. And he's in the doghouse now, uh, Bannon. He's on his way out. And whether he'll ever have a, any, I mean, any important position in politics in the future is unlikely. But, but um, he's burned his bridges. But anyways, I, li I read books because that's where you get your information. I think you get better information rather than watching the news and getting little sound bites here and there. Um, books to me are the best source of information. So, yes, I read the book. I liked the book. I thought it was very readable, very satisfying to read. I read it in like three and a half days. I got it Friday morning, and by noon Monday, I was reading it. Only, t only 22 chapters, plus a preface and an introduction, and a, um, or a prologue, rather, preface, prologue, and then there was an epilogue in the back. So maybe 25 total chapters. Um, easy to read. And I thought very enjoyable to read a lot of good information um, without being a lot of scandal. Ooh. So I would definitely recommend the book. Um, but again, to those people who want to criticize me for having liked the book, fine, say what you want. But say you've read the book cover to cover. and Otherwise, I'm not going to give much value <laughs> To what you have to say so that's my opinion that's my latest vlog um if you like what you hear uh subscribe if you hate me <laughs> unsubscribe i don't care i don't make any money from these videos i just do this for the fun of it and it is fun i'm enjoying myself so thanks for listening